Hello Malty, Malficient uh, Malt Monkeys. And thank you to Z Scott Thomas for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie Maltmates. Welcome to my little treasure trove lair, somewhere remote in a mystical island far, far away in some Celtic sort of netherworld. Yes, we're in the Bothy and I am sharing a malt moment with you. This particular Ralphie Review malt moment is 897 and I'm concluding a series I've been doing over the last four or five weeks of younger, available, accessible single malts, which by default tend to be affordable, more affordable single malts. And I'm concluding this series with a very affordable single malt, which many people will overlook because they regard it as inferior. And I would call it more basic than inferior. It isn't spectacular. It's not got the dynamics of a, an official brand single malt. It's not got the style of presentation that we enjoy from an integrity bottling, but it is a very affordable. And this review is for all of you who are on a strict whiskey budget. This is for you. Because, hey, I remember many years ago when literally I could go out and buy one bottle of whiskey a week and there was times where it would be every two weeks and it had to be basic stuff because, frankly, that's all I could afford. Uh, and I'm very fortunate. Times have changed. I have a, a, a very generous budget. But still, you won't find me reviewing extravagant aged whiskies because to be perfectly honest I don't think they're worth the money and the whiskey I'm re reviewing for you is the cheapest available bottling from my local town and it comes from a supermarket it's a supermarket bottling there's plenty of them if you happen to be in the UK and the British Isles and this happens to be the co-op supermarket who have bottled a 12 year old single malt scotch whiskey at 40% and uh, they describe it as irresistible but interestingly and I commend the co-op for this they have braille on the back label which is inclusive and more distilleries should do this. I know Aaron does it. Good for Aaron. They're ahead of the curve. Many bigger, bigger, much bigger brands don't. And frankly, they're looking dated because of that. They're looking excluding, rather inclusive in their marketing message. And it shows, it's not what they say, it's what they do. So to have braille for those who are partially sighted or cannot see, Wonderful. And as I've said in the past, those who may be lacking in one articulate sense compensate in other senses. Quite dramatically at times. And also, all credit to the co-op, um, they actually state ingredients. Now, personally, I think this should be a pre prerequisite in the form of disclosure, because disclosure is integrity, is quality. They're all intertwined. And the ingredients, demineralized water, single malt scotch whiskey, color, and in brackets, plain caramel, and a closure is a cork. So here we have a supermarket actually telling us in the UK that there's caramel E150A used in their whiskey. Co-op, I'm really going to mention this Good on you. Thank you for your integrity and your honesty and your transparency, which is fundamentally lacking across the industry. And that, in my opinion, really needs to change. Let's pour a glass. It's cost me £25. It is the cheapest age-stated single malt whiskey that I can buy locally. It's the sort of whiskey that I'd buy if I was a student, if I had poor 
earnings and I had lots of debt and I was on a strict budget, this is what I'd be buying. And this is what I'm reviewing for you. And I'm just going to tell you as it is and then I'm going to take things a little bit further. When I first opened this bottle, the nose was uptight, two-dimensional, and it smelt of cask juice. It smelled of contemporary toasted charred casks. It was relatively superficial and it wasn't particularly encouraging. It was competent as a single malt, but no more than that. However, what I've done, I've left it overnight with the cork off to breathe, to air, to, to settle itself, just to settle down and start to open up, having been unsealed, and it makes a dramatic difference. It makes a difference to all whiskies, but when you've got a budget whisky, an economy whisky, it makes even more of a difference. Now in the nose, I'm getting the whisky, the malt signature that's in the background. I don't necessarily think this is, it says it's a, well, it doesn't say anything actually. <laughs> I was gonna say it's a Highlander, it's a space side, but no, hang on, I'll just have another quick read, seeing as I've got my reading glasses on. Now it just says bottled in Scotland, doesn't give you a region, nothing like that. What am I getting? Something very generic, slightly space-eyed, slightly dried fruit, slightly fresh fruit, bit vague and on the taste, bear in mind it's 40%, I'm not even going to bother adding some water initially. Bit harsh, bit woody, bit superficial, definitely second and third fill casks, economy casks, absolutely smacks of economy casks, but it's clean, it's kind of fresh, spirit driven, it's oxidised, it's calmed down, just adding a few drops of water is going to bring out a little bit more of the character that is there having been suppressed by the economy of its production. I have to add that the spirit that goes into these economy bottlings is basically the same spirit most of the time that goes into official bottlings. They're off the same still, same production method. It's not necessarily the case that this happens because there are invisible distilleries in Scotland which supply a big amount of volume to supermarkets at greatly reduced prices. Um, but that's another conversation for another day. I've added a drop of water, any development, bit more fresh fruit in the nose, a little touch of spearmint in the background now, a bit of fresh mint. Much better. Tiny drop of water. What did I add? One milliliter. One. Huge difference. Immediate difference. Extension of the range. A more volume in the arrival, more complexity in the development, and more substance in the finish. Lemon and ginger in the finish. What have we got in the arrival? Butterscotch, toffee, sultana, ginger, hint of chilli, Grapefruit, a bit of marzipan, a perfect, better, this is better than a bad version of a good malt. This is far better than a bad batch of a whiskey three times the price. So what am I going to give this? Budget, single malt, completely unglamorous, but if you're in a budget, and you want a competent malt moment, look out for these kinds of bottles. In the supermarkets, all the supermarkets do them. Some do them better than others. The best supermarket for these style of whiskies are Aldi and Lidl. 
and I'm just telling you as it is. Sainsbury's not, are not as good as they were. Tesco, no. Asta, mm, no. Co-op, not bad. It's 81 out of 100. And that is a malt mark. However, I want to continue this review into Ralphie Review 897 Extras in which I will show you and demonstrate how for a very small amount of money you can elevate 91 to a 96 or more out of 100. In other words, if you are on a strict and tight budget and you cannot afford the high-end whiskies or the fashionable whiskies and the popular integrity bottlings and limited editions, forget it. If you cannot afford them, there's a way around this and I'm going to share it with you. But Malt Mates, you'll have to tune in to find out. Join me shortly. I'm Rafi, over and out. <laughs>